Tonight, Public Access Live is proud to present my guest, the amazing Laura Cook, and that interview begins in three, two, one. Welcome to Public Access Live. This is my guest, Laura Cook. Hello, friend. Hello, friend. Um, already with the I love her hair. Already with the I love her hair. That's awesome. Thanks, y'all. Uh, I was I was told you were going to show it smelling like pizza. I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> I think if you sniff my hair, it'll still smell a little like pizza. Do you, do you like pizza enough to... Because when I worked food service, like, the last thing I wanted to do was eat at that particular restaurant. Do you still have a love for... I do, but, like, the place I work is actually good. I know. Uh, I Yeah, I know. It was really weird <laughs> listening to you talk about how the pizza gave you a boner in front of your children. That was cool. I just talked about it in front of my children. <laughs> I didn't actually achieve semi in front of my children. That's, that's not right. Um, comedian. Should I throw a promoter in there? If you want. I mean, you are booking rooms right now, right? That's true. And you have, you got one tonight? I do, at it, the that, Starlight. That's your yeah. show, right? Me and Hilton Price produced that one together. Okay. Kind of a good venue. I like the shimmery curtain. Oh, I do too. Everybody, it's very, very like tonight show feel. Mm -hmm. It's also great for when some of the like spooky people from the neighborhood show up and they're like, what kind of bar is this? Is this a gay bar? And we're just like, yes, <laughs> this is very gay. You should get out now. And it's contagious. It's airborne and contagious. That's right. What got you into comedy? Spite. <laughs> that might be the first time. Everybody else, well, I was a smart ass in high school. My friends are like, hey, you should be a comedian. But you, revenge. Revenge comedy? Almost. Just more like, I knew I was funny anyway, and then I was dating <laughs> this piece of human garbage, and... Oh, you, he, can, um, you can burn anybody you want on here. Okay. The, the number. Well, I don't want to say their name. Then that gives them some sort of power. Oh, I got you. Oh, he's too big of a piece of shit for me to mention. <laughs> Go on. Mention by name. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> but obviously we would be hanging out and I would say some hilarious thing and he would say like, oh, well, I'm going to say that on stage. Like, um, you <laughs> didn't write that. And he was like... Well, you're not a comedian, so anything that you say is fair game. So I drove him to an open mic once, and I was just like, you know what, fuck you, and I signed up. At the and, BFW? Um, at Yeti Writers Night. Oh, nice. Oh, no. It's, nope. There's nothing like doing comedy for a bunch of underage kids on blow, you know. <laughs> but Yeti was kind of a melting pot. I mean, it would take it would take hipsters wearing their, their Target hats and their suspenders. It would take... I mean, just about every, it would take old men wearing suits. Yeah. Everybody fit in at the Yeti, though. You know, even mm -hmm. even human garbage. Oh, yes, there definitely. It's a, a good place for human garbage to gather. <laughs> just, yeah, anyone, really. I just, I, I didn't prefer the atmosphere so much. Mm -hmm. I love the staff. The staff's great. I love Damien, who hosted. And it was about the only bar you could go to and get a Strongbow Cider. Uh, well, Strongbow used to be so good, and then it got all sugary once Captain Picard started sponsoring it. What? Um, Please tell me a story. No, um, so <laughs> it used to be like a really dry cider, and in these big cans, and you know all the punk rockers drank it constantly, and right. then... 
they changed the recipe and it started being um like the guy in all the commercials was Jean Luc Picard. Not not in character. Right, but, but I mean Patrick know. Stewart was yes, doing the Patrick strong. Yes, Patrick Stewart was doing the strong boat commercials. I didn't know that. And I was like, well, why are you endorsing it now that it sucks? Like, oh my gosh. Okay. Should we hold that question till the end? It does have food reference. Do you like butt sex and Chinese food? Uh, let's see. Oh, somebody called out Nick Osborne by name. Oh, why did you say that? Huh? No, because they did. They, they yes. actually mentioned. Uh, let's Gross. see. Fuck, Mary, kill your mom, your dad, your brother. Go. You know, these aren't the kind of questions we're. I don't have any brothers. <laughs> I got a question for you because I just drove. Um, Yesterday, I took my daughter to something called Protocol, and it's like a fake mock date for homeschoolers, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's where they go to a meal, and a boy pulls the chair out for them and things like that. But me and my sister were talking on the side, and she's like, creepier than probably what you just had to go through, daddy-daughter dates. But your face says it all. I mean, hmm. can you imagine your dad taking you out on an experience to get you used to dating? Because this is a thing. I looked it up. I was huh. like, that's gross. She's like, no, 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 no. Like, like, I've gone out and like had lunch with my dad or like gone like, out to have a beer with my dad. <laughs> but, you know, I would hope that my dad would act nothing like a lot of the men who have taken me on dates. Like, not allowed to. Ch you're not allowed to choke people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happened to the days when you could choke someone on a date? <laughs> No, you're still not supposed to. <laughs> oh. Uh, what is your favorite action film? Hmm. <laughs> action film? <laughs> I don't know. John Wick was cool in the way that I can relate to hunting down and murdering anyone that had anything to do with the death of my dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's very protective of you. <laughs> I love her. She's an angel. Well, of course. No matter how bad they act, he's still... He's still okay. That one doesn't like me. That one doesn't like anyone. I'm serious. He, if he didn't own the house, we would have kicked him out by now. But oh, we rent from him. I see. Uh, let's see. Miss Cook, what do you think is the best place to do comedy in Tulsa? Thank you so much. Oh, this, definitely the Starlight. The Starlight. <laughs> right? Well, not just because like it's the venue that I get to book and because I totally work there. Um, so it's, like, it's, all, it's always just been such a fun room. Like People are so happy to come there. Yeah. And they pack it out every time. It's always the people who attend are always there because they want to see the comedy show. Well, you it's have to go not... through a little bit of trouble to go. Number one, you have to come to my side of town. Number two, if well, there's a lot of people that live here. But number two, you have to know it's if it's sprinkling, you might have to. I mean, it's a, it's a busy small room. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to, like, go shoulder to shoulder with some people. So the people that are there want to be there. Yeah. And it's always, yeah, it's like one of the best. I've been doing bar rooms for like three years, and that's mm -hmm. the biggest attraction I've ever seen in a bar. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, Starlight's expanding pretty soon, too, into to the, the space next door. I'm going to knock out a little door they and have a, have a room in there? that, or for like if there's live music, because like we've had full bands perform there before, but it's just so silly because the stage is about the size of a regular size drum kit. Right. So. The rest of the band sort of has to stand on the floor, spread out, and yeah, there's... when I have a lot, and you know, like, it gets so crowded on busy nights anyway, it would be nice to have some extra room so I'm not breathing in Kevin's armpit sweat or whatever. <laughs> Kevin's a random name, or there's a guy there every night named Kevin? <laughs> I don't think I've seen a Kevin recently. They just don't look like the kind of place that facilitates Kevin's. I don't remember you. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm trying to throw questions out there for you. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you for watching tonight. Um, would you ever dye your hair bright red to go with a pretty MAGA hat? <laughs> I wouldn't dye my hair bright red at all. Obviously, I'm a crip, and that is not accessible to me. A crip. Do you know any of the gang signs? 
<laughs> oh, Do, well, is it okay to represent on camera? <laughs> well, someone broke all of my fingers in the last gang fight I was in, so I can't. Um, um, <laughs> I can't do it. I'm sorry. Uh, Ashley says, I agree with your answer of choking people out 100%. Recently <laughs> single. <laughs> oh. Bad experience. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I'm sure if you pay the right people, you can choke people. Mm-hmm. Miss Cook, where is the best place to sit in a co- comedy club audience? Um, Are you, depends on what you want to do. When you go to a show, do you stay away from the front row? You're like, I am not going to let this guy work on me tonight. Oh, I don't care. Oh, you don't? No, not at all. The only time that it bothered me is when I went to see somebody at the Looney Bin like forever ago and... I pulled my phone out to check what time it was because I was supposed to pick my friend up from getting surgery later. Right. And I wanted to make sure I was going to be on time. And the dude just took my phone out of my hand and started chewing me out about, like, being on my phone during his set. And I was like, I didn't say anything, but I was like, man. And all he was doing was telling jokes about how, like, women want to cuddle. I hate my wife. (laughs) You know? It's like, you're not even funny and you're going to die in two years of diabetes. So... (laughs) Please tell me another one about how bad airline food is. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I hag. beat my children, but it's love. You know. <laughs> it, that guy. It's amazing they let him manage the place. <laughs> um, <laughs> I broke you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a victory for me. I thought she was going to stone me the whole night. She just... <laughs> <laughs> Don't be sorry. That he just—he's just such a butthole. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. He hasn't—he's never has to be on the show. Huh. Huh. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. He might say things like the R word and the F A G word. <laughs> he might say a lot of mm-hmm. stuff. Well, you know what? If black people are allowed to say the N word, then I think it's okay for him to say those things. So. <laughs> no, it's not. So bad. I know. <laughs> whenever I heard, whenever I heard the stories about Comedy Survivor about him going up there hosting a show and doing twenty at the opening, I was like, "Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're the host. Give it five minutes. Give it your best <laughs> shot. Pull somebody on stage. What? It's not that hard. I've hosted a bunch of them because I'm not funny enough to be on the show. Uh, what is your style of comedy? Um." Whatever I think it's funny, I guess. Do, do, you, uh, do you pattern yourself after it? Do you look up to anyone in particular and you're like, I like the way they write, I like the way they perform? I mean, do you pick them apart like that? or? You I mean, not own- really, because I, while I enjoy lots of other comedians, I don't want to be like somebody else. I want to be myself and, you know, I want to, and I don't like the idea of trying to emulate someone too much like for instance I knew a girl who played the piano and I went to see her play one day and I was just like oh wow she just really really wants to be the like making my way downtown lady (laughs) yeah the song in white chicks I yeah she's she's she was like she even like looked like her and I was like oh my god well there was a thing that came out at that time it was a thing for a bit yeah, but I was like, I don't want anyone to have any room to, like, try to compare me to someone or say oh, that nice. I'm, like, or to say that I would be, like, trying to copy their style or something. Did I you, don't want to do that. Did you have influences um, before you started comedy? Like, you, you were probably a fan like me before you ever decided you wanted to try it, right? Mm-hmm. What, who, who did you like watching? <clears throat> I used to really enjoy Sarah Silverman a lot. Nice. Nice, yeah. well written stuff. When they started, when she started her show on Comedy Central, my friend called me up, and he was this like grumpy old Vietnam vet, and was like, "Laura, <laughs> they wrote a show about you. Come over and watch it." Well, at least it wasn't Lady Dynamite. <laughs> I love that too. I like it too. Oh I'm just glad nobody's ever compared me to it. Uh, kind of reminds me of you a little bit, like. I'm a little maybe, nervous. maybe, <laughs> maybe we're all like that. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, no more inner voices. Let's see, dub for the win. At your family reunion, do you ever use puns like "There are too many cooks in the kitchen"? I did sing the, <laughs> I did sing the "too many cooks" thing from 
um, Cartoon Network at um, Thanksgiving, and nobody got it except for, like, my one cousin who smokes too much weed. <laughs> and he was like, yeah! That's the best joke ever. Did you... Did you go to the Puntasmagoria? Is that your thing at all? I didn't go to that. In fact, I didn't even know it was happening until Ethan called me wanting something. And he was like, I'm going to be there. Oh. Oh. I was like, oh, I didn't know. But I'm really glad that they had a good time. (laughs) What's your favorite type of sandwich, dot, 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 to make a man? (laughs) I mean, I guess if Dustin asked me to make him a sandwich, I'd do it. But, I mean, he does anything for me. One time I told him I wanted a cheese fountain, and his drunk ass ordered me a cheese fountain. So, like, yeah, I'll make him any kind of sandwich he wants if he's just going to pick up his phone and send a cheese fountain to me on a whim. I had a friend, uh, Shay Adams. He he was uh, part of the morning show here, and he died a few years back. Biggie Shay. And he used to tell me, like, if you want a queen, you got to treat her like one. Like, he'd give his wife anything. Mm. Like, that's, he's like, he's like, nobody can call her anything but a queen because that's how I treat her. I was like, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. And then I had daughters, and I was like, you know what? I hope everybody treats them like queen. Uh, except this one. Mm. It's my son. Uh, He's passed out, man. Oh my god, where is the cheese fountain? I need access. <laughs> you can get them on Amazon for like fifteen ninety nine. Really? Yeah, like, like my boyfriend's a teacher. It's not like he was like he has like extra cheese fountain money laying around. If it's like more than fifteen bucks, is he is he secondary or elementary? What's his stress threshold? Um, <laughs> <laughs> he teaches AP history in high school. Oh my god. He's so smart. <laughs> I'm so proud of him. <laughs> do you guys uh, find time between your, your comedy and your promoting and booking and stuff, do you guys find time to find stuff to nerd out on? Do you guys like movies? Are you, are you a video game person? Are you a board game person? Do you have oh, time? I I go to... Actually, my boyfriend hosts trivia as well, so I go to his trivia night a lot. Huh? Um And we play... My team plays Scrabble while we play trivia. That's how you know, uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, like, me and some, like, old goths, and, like, that's our team. Describe an old goth. <laughs> well, not, more like later in Gen X old, not like. Okay. <laughs> not somebody wearing a, a full-length black leather coat, like. <laughs> no. Like Morpheus or anything. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't play like that. <laughs> Your dog's a shit singer. I know, right? He's gonna be on all the merch. You got see see what uh, the the channel stresses. Love your face, right? That's the kind of that's the kind of um, way of expressing sentiment without getting mushy. Like, I love see. your face, but see, we're gonna put it on like t-shirts and mugs. So if you really don't like um, being grateful to other people who are overly overly um, complimentary you mm-hmm. can just show them the mug they'll be like oh I really like your hair today and you just tip up the love your face mug and stare them down it's like mm-hmm. read the mug works out that way and I his see. face is going to be on it because everybody loves that dog I still think you should think about the wizard hat for him <laughs> I can't chew me alive he is in Photoshop charge Photoshop exists idiot make it work you know she made me feel dumb in two words before the show even started I asked a question and she goes google it I was like, I'm dumb. Well, I was just assuming you didn't have a book of <laughs> raccoon facts in your home. I could be wrong. You have a lot of books here. I might, I might have. If there's anything, if the Boy Scouts ever wrote anything about a raccoon, I have access. Because I do have a Boy Scout manual around here somewhere. Did they have to know much about raccoons except to, like, not pet them? <laughs> like, like Buddy the Elf? Ooh, you're feisty. <laughs> Oh no, that's me. I would be dead in the wilderness pretty instantly because I would try to hug a bear or something. You, you're, you're definitely animal people, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, you'll go to any extreme. To rescue? Or... I will help them, or if it seems too dangerous, I'll call somebody who's more equipped to. Nice. But also, I want to kiss their little faces. Well, actually, if I am not asking that on the air, 
It has nothing to do with cursing. There's a maturity warning on this channel, but there's certain content. Like, I had the 18 and plus when Tom King came here. Yeah. <laughs> That's important. Yeah. It wasn't what he said. It was the way he said it. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, I was just imagining, like... He decided to take off his pants to reveal the fishnets. No, 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 no. It wasn't anything like that. Even though I do hear there's a, there's pictures of him on some social media platforms of just him in a Batman mask. Mm. <laughs> Nothing else. I saw a Tom King nude once. <laughs> it was on somebody's phone, and I was like, oh, that's my friend's wiener. And that was the end of that. <laughs> He was smiling real big, too. He always does. He's so proud. Ta-da! Nudity. I'm back to the way I was born. <laughs> that must be nice. <laughs> you know, there's only like two people that I know that use that term a lot. It's mm -hmm. me and my sister just to make each other laugh. Calling it a wiener. <laughs> it's wiener. one of those. <laughs> oh, my wiener. <laughs> I'm falling apart. Uh, let's see. Wipe the cat's ass. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm, that goes back to a question I'm not asking. Miss Cook, I like how your hair moves. Oh, thank you, Mocho. You like mm -hmm. how it moves? <laughs> well, you have that fan. I think you should get a bigger fan, though, so it would make me, like, look sexy. Make my hair really move. <laughs> if I got a big enough fan, make my hair move. There's nothing sexy about it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you have quite a bit of product in there. I, I have a little it. bit of product in there. I don't like it moving a lot. Uh, let's see. Do it. Oh, let's see. No, I'm not asking you that question, Ashley. It's. Oh, God. I am tired of swallowing my boyfriend's load. Is there anything you can recommend to get the taste out of my mouth? And then someone said, a cat's ass. <clears throat> and then it just spiraled downward like oh. the roof at Notre Dame. Too soon? Um, what do you think about the hot take? This is something I've been asking people this uh, this series. Because if you have a comedian on your Facebook friends list and something huge happens in the news, obviously they're going to make a comment on it. If you have mm -hmm. 50 comedians on there, 45 of them are going to tell the same joke. Mm -hmm. Five of them might be funny. What do you think yeah. about the hot take? Do you do you get into that? Do you, do you... It's generally... I don't know, they're all generally, like, so similar that I'm just, like, I don't even want to mess with it. And it's nothing they would ever use in their stand-up. It's just so they can be funny on Facebook that day, yeah? Well, yeah, but, like, there are things I would post on social media that I wouldn't post on, or say on stage. But it's not because I think that I'm just being funny for Facebook. It's just because, like... I can tell a long-winded story about how some bitch tipped me in lollipops instead of giving me actual money, but it's not really funny to rant about that on stage. Do you do you use like they know I'm a waitress, I'm a comedian, like obviously. <laughs> do you do you talk about yourself more or do you like to do you like to people watch and go I'm going to that's funny. I'm going to use that. Only if that person decides to do something shitty. <laughs> like, Spifely. <laughs> like, if somebody's gonna... If somebody heckles, then I'll say some shit to them. But typically, I just... Typically, I don't want to, like, bring anybody into it. I don't want to make them uncomfortable. I'm already talking enough shit about myself, you know? <laughs> do, you, do you like set up punchline? Do you like to... you like stories? I mean, how do you, how do you like to present your, your, your humor? You like to make it a nice little story and then like walk people through the experience. I guess it depends on what I'm talking about. There are like there are shorter jokes just about like, well, I'm fat. Next thing, or or it can be like I did this thing and here's why it makes sense. I think I think people around here are like really starved for um, material. Because mm -hmm. if there's a guy that's 10 pounds overweight, he's telling jokes about how he's fat. And it's like, you're not really fat. No, not really. Do you, do you see people using, like, certain things as a crutch? Or basically, like, starter material. Like, they're they're just starting out in comedy, so they're going <clears> to... <throat> so they're going to talk about Tinder, and they're going to describe Tinder, because nobody knows how Tinder works. Like. <laughs> right? <laughs> Everybody's got a tin. Nobody knows how that works. <laughs> Better tell me. 
Better spend three out of your four minutes you have at this open mic to tell me how Tinder works. Thank you. <laughs> Let's talk about food. <laughs> oh, goody. Are you adventure seder? I'll eat pretty much anything. Do you like do you like spicy? Yeah. Hot, do you? Mm-hmm. I just have to be careful now that I'm getting into my 30s. Like, as I'm getting older, my butt was, like, more angry about the decisions I make. I've got to listen to it. Indian food, does it talk to you much? <laughs> Unless I'm eating vindaloo, it's pretty cool. <laughs> the Indian food. The full vindaloo zone. Right off. You get a nice korma, a good tikka masala, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's about the range. Yes, I'd say so. What a... Do you do do you do holidays with um, uh, the boyfriend now, or do, are um, you traditional stuff? Turkey. Well, he's coming over for Easter, and this is the first time that he's really met anybody outside of like my parents and my sister. Like you know, my whole like West Tulsa family is going to be there. You know, like my aunt with the missing eyeballs and <laughs> all all those motherfuckers coming out to party. Weisberry Hill. Oh, word. So yeah. she knows what up. <laughs> yeah, they lived in the Webster neighborhood, but they bought, like, a little section of land in Berry Hills. They could send the kids to Berry Hills instead of Webster. Mm. <laughs> Probably a good move. <laughs> yeah. I remember Webster used to, they were that one school. If you went if you went to Webster, of course, Webster kids are going to pick a fight with you mm. if the football game was at their school. But they were the school that would come to your school and start fights. They didn't care that they were in the away stands. They're like, we're going to burn this place down. Like, every game? Really? Come on, guys. And then there was that thing with the brim handle. And... <laughs> uh, oh, no. West Tulsa is rough. It's not rough. It's just smelly. <laughs> Not because of the people who live there. There's just that's where all the refineries are. Wow. I took a trip to Colorado and I came back and it was like I'd spent four days in mountain air and pretty vistas and then I crossed over the Arkansas River right next to Pepsi Cola where that wow. like treatment plant is or whatever. It's like, oh Gross. man, I'm home. I'm home. Can I turn around and go back? It's only fourteen hours. Let's go. Have you driven past the garbage place on the way to like if you're going to Chandler Park? Oh yeah, on West Twenty First. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever like seen it when the sides open and you just see like it's like two <laughs> stories, just like a gone. fucking garbage. <laughs> I just like st- pulled over one time and my friend was in the passenger seat and he's like, "What are you doing?" I was like. It's just so much garbage. And it's right next door to a place that does galvanizing, so the entire building is rusted from all the acid and stuff that they use. Oh, it's so gross. It's like, they oh, just... so this is where people come to lose teeth. Now I know. Oh. I think you can get meth anywhere in the city. <laughs> now. It used to be bad. You used to have to hunt for meth. Oh, really? Yeah. I, it's like explaining to the kids what it was like to only have three channels on the TV. They're like, we can get meth anywhere. I don't want to. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, let's see. What about the Bixby football team and a pool stick? <sighs> oh, Bixby. That's. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? You would make the best teacher? I'm actually in school to be a high school Latin teacher. So. Really? Yeah. High school Latin? Mm-hmm. So basically teaching people how to read and write. I mean, people don't in speak. In a dead language. But... Well, it's dead because people yeah. don't speak it anymore. So. Well, I, we kind of used it conversationally when I was in high school taking it so that cause it's easier to learn something if you're going to, yeah. if you use it with but, conversation. But my kids learned it as part of their homeschooling. Yeah. But I... You're, did you did you go to like uh, did you continue your education after high school and then like I'm gonna go this is crap and then go back to it? Um, after high school, I went straight to university and then. What'd you study? I t- Latin. Oh, okay. And history and really education, and then I had to take a ran out of dead relative money break because <laughs> I went to TU for about three years and it was very expensive. But I went back just a couple years ago, and I'm at OSU Tulsa now. Are you... Has has 
being with Dustin taught you, that, oh, maybe maybe I can't handle. There's a lot of people that want to be teachers, and then the first time they're in a classroom full of kids are like, not with your kids. Your kids are out of control. Well, I, don't I don't want this job. Your kids can be dumb for all I care. I don't want, like, the dirty little young ones. I want... <laughs> I want to do high school, and if they're high schoolers who are purposely taking Latin, they're probably not there to, like, screw around, around and, yeah. like, vape. <laughs> <laughs> vape. Oh, my God. My friend, my friend Other Dustin is a band director in Vertigris, and some of his kids came up and they were like, Mr. Brown, we want to start a petition to get the toilets taken out of the jewel room. What's the jewel room? The bathroom. They're vaping in the boys room. <laughs> like 100% <laughs> that's what's happening. Vaping in the boys room. Or the girls room. Whatever. No, it's just like... Go in there to hit that sweet vape. Yeah, I don't want to hear it. Kids have it so easy. You know what? Used to, when I was your age, they made us smoke real cigarettes in the boys room. We didn't have, we didn't have vapes. What we got was cancer. <sighs> and now you just get plumes of pancake syrup smelling stuff. <laughs> and we went to a hockey game and I didn't want to leave and I was trying to vape into my coat. And then Dustin looks at me and he's like, oh my god, are you one of my students? This is so obvious. <laughs> and I was like, well is, any, well, is it obvious to anybody else? He's like, no, it's fine. What's the deal with vaping anyway? Because the thing I don't understand is flavors that people never eat or drink they will vape. It's like, I've never seen you eat a watermelon, but, yep. <laughs> you know, what is it? Oh, the... I, lo I love the flavor of all fruits. Unfortunately, I have mint flavor right now. And I, I use mint pretty frequently. Mostly in cocktails, but hey. Mm. For some reason, I just thought of an amaretto sour. Mm. I don't know why. But... Meh, it's one of those things. It breaks the ice with a bartender real easy, too, because you're like, excuse me, could you make me an amaretto sour and not laugh at me, please? And they just look at me like, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I don't, well, when I'm bartending, I don't care as long as you're not like, can I get something, um, like, I want it, to, I don't like it to be too sweet, but I like it to be fruity, and I'm like, well, what the fuck do you want, then? <laughs> Do you want me to, like, throw a bunch of bitters and some pineapple juice? <laughs> Basically what they're saying is, can you make me something that you don't make anyone else? That's pretty much what they're saying. I'm special enough that I need to take your time away from your regulars to make me something totally unique is what they're asking for. Because I bartended for a while, and those no. people are like... There's just certain things you know. A guy that orders scotch is going to tip you more than a guy that yeah. orders bourbon. A What's your favorite drink to make? A shot of fucking whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... And then at my day job, I do... We have, like, an all, like, craft cocktail and craft beer bar. Oh, yeah? And people... Yeah, and people came in wanting um, car bombs. Yeah. And, like, it's so expensive to get a car bomb at Andalese. Is it? Well, yeah, we don't have Guinness on draft. We can use one of the other stouts, but, like, it's something, like, Founders KBS, something that's, like, $8 for 12 ounces. Right. So we're going to get you... So, like, that's going to be your base for it. And then, you know, we don't have Baileys. We have this stuff called Breton, which is higher end. Oh, nice. But, so, like, everything is... So, so a $6 like, car bomb's like, $19. Basically. <laughs> and I was just like, are you sure? This is what I'm going to have to ring up. But these people were... I think they were stoned or something. <laughs> And they looked like they were still going to tip me, so I was like, okay, I'm going to make you all the weird, expensive crap you want. But. What was your attraction to Latin? F, let's see, my junior and senior year of high school, I had some room to take some electives, and I had already finished my language credit, Yeah, which was, I took Spanish, like, Who did? I up took to, like, Spanish though, 4. Yeah. So then... I just was like, oh, what should I take? And Latin Club looked super fun. Really? <laughs> yeah, everybody loved being in Latin Club, so I was like, all right, I guess I'll take Latin. And I I was correct. I had a great time. What's your favorite cocktail, they're asking? My favorite cocktail? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Right now at Starlight, actually, we have the Spicy Paloma. It's 
I love anything that's tequila based anyway. Okay. And instead of just grapefruit juice, we also use squirt. <laughs> yeah, none of that fresca bullshit. Right. This is squirt, yo. Get it right there across the street. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Family Dollars got it. Oh yeah, they do. <laughs> but we squirt. also rim it with this spicy salt. It's oh, yeah? fantastic. And the the simple syrup in the Paloma is habanero infused. It's delicious. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, love squirt. <laughs> if you just say it like that, it's so wrong. Love squirt. Uh, let's see. Twenty dollars for a drink. That should best take me out to dinner first. <laughs> You're being so good. Are you being a good dog? So, uh, we're to that point. We're gonna try something new with Miss Cook here. We're gonna do a Hooray. little a little improv game, sort of. Uh, it's kind of a outside looking in. Basically, it's three simple questions. These questions are going to be a. If you didn't know you, and you mm-hmm. saw you for the first time, what do you think your name is? Where do you think you're from? And what do you think a secret that no one knows about? this person is so what what would you say if you just met you today your name was just guessing oh i would probably think that my name was just something like margaret or something but that i go by something real stupid like <coughs> like <coughs> shazammy pants spooky or something you know like, like a burlesque name like a spooky burlesque name <laughs> Oh, maybe, maybe, <laughs> or like, or like a roller derby name. I get, I get lots of people just being like, "Oh my god, do you do roller derby?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> yeah, I have a nose ring, but like, that that's the, not really a prerequisite. I think you have to know how to roller skate. <laughs> the presupposition of oh, nose ring, roller derby. Right. Uh, where would you say you're from? I could really be from anywhere, but <laughs> I don't know. As far as other people around, I look probably look like I fit in in Tulsa. <laughs> right. The dog is licking the mic. It's ASMR. <laughs> oh, no. Was he really? Well, we try to do what we can to get subs around here. Make the dog lick the mic. Okay, do it. And what would be a secret that no one knows about you, about this person, this Margaret person? Hmm. I don't know, like peanut butter on the genitals, the dog shows up. That's that's some Margaret shit for sure. Batman mask involved. No. It's a phone open, Tom King's picture. Whoa. Uh let's see, pinup girl. Oh, somebody's saying pinup girl, Portland. Why Portland? Is there a lot of, it's a like. <coughs> it's, have you watched Portlandia ever? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, nice. Margaret seems fun. <laughs> Everybody's a big fan of Margaret all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't like anything about Margaret except for her name. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you want to plug other than your show on tonight that you're about to go to? Uh, a way that people can reach out to you. If they're interested in having a room booked, or okay, what's um, a what's a way people can get in touch with you, contact you? Get them. Yeah. Oh, thank God the murderer has been defeated. <laughs> Good dog. Good dog. Bloodbath. What's the dog's name? Right, Bloodbath. Oliver. <laughs> Oliver Bloodbath. Oliver Bloodbath. <laughs> 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 obviously come out to starlight not just for comedy night um every wednesday is trivia night starting at 8 p.m it's a freaking blast get to hear my hot man tell you all the questions you, you got that drew carey face and that hank hill booty everything <laughs> a woman would ever want let's see were you what shopping else? dad bod <laughs> I was not shopping. This <laughs> this dude came out of nowhere trying to get all up in this and and it worked because he was respectful. So <laughs> Which was something new to learn around. <laughs> what is that? Oh. 
You're treating me like a human. <laughs> what is this shit? <laughs> he called me by my name. My right. name for crying out loud. What was I supposed to do? I fell in love with him. <laughs> I've never once heard him refer to women as bitches. That's just great. <laughs> is, that, is that a bad thing? But I, I'm a human. I'm not a dog. <laughs> I don't want to be dehumanized. I'd prefer if you just called me a I know, cunt I know people, because at least cunts are awesome. Well, I know people that, that for their, them and their significant other doesn't really get um, soppy. So their pet names for each other are usually pretty harsh. Mm. <laughs> in, my, in my, you know, I'm like, what'd you call your wife? But mm. they're fine with it. Like, I've never. Yeah, that's a different thing, though. But, like, I see people who, like, definitely use, like, bitch and like hoe and shit just interchangeably for the word woman and it doesn't even matter and mm. he he doesn't fuck around like that which is great it's nice mm. it is i mean really i'm not being no. i it know is, I, isn't it? well no i i have i have a face that people can't tell when i'm being earnest or sarcastic mm. well they're too busy looking at your ears like how have how have we gone this long without nobody ever saying shit about your elf ears? Who said nobody said anything? I've heard no one say anything ever. Yeah, they probably think it's probably pretty tired by now. I've been hearing it since I was five. Have you? Yeah. I just can't believe, like... See, what happens is... Anywhere. Is I got stuck coming out. So they use the forceps, and a, a baby's skin is very malleable. Yes, So yes. it kind of stretched the ears when they got the little head clamp thing and pulled me oh. out. Well, dope. A lot of people would pay money for that. Ding. <sighs> what you, are you looking at? Did you did you tell people where they could find you? Uh, um, Starlight. Oh. Um, and the trivia night well, for yeah. for Mister Devore. Yes, which is also at Starlight. Would you stop? My favorite place on earth. <laughs> it's a little slice of heaven, isn't it? It is fantastic. I, I, the only thing, the only thing that's ever bothered me about the place is the amount of room. Because I know mm -hmm. if I, if I get there, ten minutes before the comedy show starts, mm. I don't have a chair. I know that. Mm -hmm. I'll be standing. There are a lot of people there hand. who are smaller than you. I'm sure you could force your way into a chair. <laughs> or just sit on. I came a here to start trouble and drink. <laughs> or st sit on a larger person. Whatever you need to do. I'm sure you can figure something out. Um. Google it. <laughs> Make me feel dumb again. <laughs> Google it. Google that shit. <laughs> yeah. I guess if you want to find me, um, if you want to book a room somewhere, I guess the best thing is to like message me on Facebook Messenger. My name's Laura Cook. Nobody else named Laura Cook fucking looks like this. <laughs> like, if you find the one with, like, the weird hair, that's the one. Or if it's just a picture of, like, a possum, that's me also. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at my beauty. No, I thought you had taken a possum picture and used it as your avatar. I wasn't thinking you uh, were dressed as a possum. Well, that's equally as likely. <laughs> We'll put all of that in the description to the video that will be premiering tomorrow on YouTube. Woo! Laura Cook, thank you so much. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Thank you, friend. Thank you, friend. More to come after this. Woo.